Okay. Previously on Alan Wake. Mm. I came to Bright Falls with my wife, Alice. Thank you for coming here with me. I thought maybe you could wait here. I don't want to hear it. God damn it, Alice. Now, she's missing. Alice? <laughs> Alice? That's a scary sound right there. Wheel of a crashed car. I'm missing a week. I was attacked by shadowy men straight from a nightmare. Hmm. The sheriff took me to the lake Alice and I had stayed at. But the cabin had disappeared. Episode two, Taken. Oh, snap. Going back. Got yeah, clean shave. Honey, I'm home. Back here, sweetie. How was it? Worst weather I've ever seen. You should put some coffee on. It'll warm you up. Hey, handsome. This is going to be a long night, but these shots are turning out great. I guess you're going to need that coffee then. Oh, I was like, what's up with the light? But first, we got to get this thermos. Oh, she's taking pictures of me. No, no same pants. Look good on you. <laughs> oh, there you go. Coffee's on. Great, thanks. I'll need it if I'm gonna finish this by tomorrow. Oh, it's a winter storm. Hey. Good old New York weather. Oh, hey, I just finished those cover mock-ups. They're on your desk. Tell me what you think. No kidding. I didn't think you'd get them done this quickly. On occasion, oh. I can perform all sorts of miracles, my dear. Oh, really? So, this gotta be like an apartment. This is a, it's huge. These look really good. Oh, sure. Oh. Which, by the way, will happen over my dead body. Mm. The last time was the last time. Oh, and speaking of Barry, he called. <gasps> uh oh. Alan! Alan, please check the fuse box. Okay. I'm right here. I'm on it, honey. Please hurry. First, let me read this transcript. Oh, wait a minute. It's true what they say about the fall and the sudden stop at the end. I'd lain here in the snow while the lurid chain of scenes that had led me here kept playing in my head. Whoa! My own private snuff movie. A memory of my corpse. Alone at my own wake. Thinking in metaphors again. The femme fatale was gone. Only a sour taste remained of the kiss that killed me. Oh, I never knew the voice actor's name, but that's how... <laughs> that's um, Max Payne. Oh, shoot. This was a late goodbye. Thirteen years after I'd gotten my revenge, it had finally caught up with me. It had been a long time to bear the pain. My blood painted the snow red. A gruesome slushy dissolved all the scattered painkillers and leisurely dripped down to the sewer mingling with the bile of the city, becoming one with it. I can see them now. My wife and my baby honey i'm home what hold on never mind i'm not even going to say it dang okay yeah let's get the fuse box so that... where's I it at really like this, oh Ellen. please hurry understood got you sweetie honey it's a power outage I've got the flashlight. Okay. Hi. I'm right here. Okay. I'm sorry. I just... It just really spooked me. Don't worry. We'll just break out the candles. Oh. I know it's stupid, but it's just... Especially when I'm not prepared for it, you know? It gets to me. I love you. Tell me a story, writer. Okay. <clears throat> I used to have these nightmares when I was a kid. The dark really spooked me, too. When it got really bad, my mom gave me this old light switch. She called it the clicker. 
The clicker, huh? Yeah. If I ever got scared of the dark, I could just flip the switch and a magic light would scare the monsters away. Oh, sure. Here it is. Alan. Maybe it'll help you, too. <laughs> yeah, nice story, writer boy. You made that up right now, didn't you? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I love you, even if you are a liar. Thanks for this. Wait, that's not a good sign, even if you are a liar. What if you lied about something serious, like... No, I was not with her. <laughs> hmm. How do you feel, Mr. Wick? Any nausea, disorientation, anything like that? Mr. Wick, how are you feeling? <laughs> mm. I'm okay. My head's fine. I had to lie about my headache and memory loss. He'd send me to a hospital for tests. I couldn't leave without Alice. Mm, very well. Um, I don't think you have a concussion, but you've obviously been through quite a shock. You should take it easy for a couple of days. Thanks. Well then, Mr. Wake, we're done here. If the pain gets any worse or you experience any other symptoms, you should come see me. I'll let you get on with it then. Sarah, uh, Sheriff Breaker, is waiting for you. She's very good at her job. I'm sure she can locate your wife in no time. Doc Nelson was the image of a small town doctor. Sheriff Breaker had called him to the station to take a look at the cut in my head. Hmm. Okay, we had to. Whoa, look at that fish. I'm sorry you had to cut your morning fishing short for this, Doc. Oh, she's a beauty, ain't she? Not the biggest I ever caught, if you can believe that coming from an old fisherman like me. But <laughs> she's right up there. Now, she's a largemouth bass, which is what you're after if you prefer a lure. Now, if you want either trout or salmon, on the other hand, then it's fly fishing for you. Um, you a fishing man, Mr. Wake? Oh, doesn't really matter, I suppose. But it can be very relaxing out there. You can't get me off the water this time of year. Closest thing to heaven. I'll take nice. your word for it, Doc. I only went fishing one time. And <laughs> not to brag, but... That first time I caught like 10 fish. No lie. You can ask my mother. Oh, shoot. Thank you for the camping trip overdue having caught. I hope I didn't kill these people. Oh, and I'm sure the, a cat. Oh, never mind. That would be missing. Come in, Mr. Wake. Yeah. Your phone's on the desk. The battery was dead. It's charged now. Thank you. Have you started looking for my wife yet? My men are already on it. Now, can you tell me what happened? I'm not sure. I can't remember. We were arguing. I walked out of the cabin. The cabin on Cauldron Lake? How did you end up at Stucky's gas station? I wanted to tell her what had happened last night, but I couldn't. She'd lock me up. Excuse me, I need to take this. Hello? Alan, please help me. Alice? Stop talking to the law. You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife. Who again. is this? Whoa. Go to the back lot. There's a hole in the fence on the left. Look inside the junker. I left a little something there to convince you we're all on the same page here. After you ditch the cops, you're going to meet me in Elderwood National Park. There's a spot called Lover's Peak. Mr. Wake, can I Midnight. help you with anything? Don't do nothing stupid, pal. We're watching you. I need to get some air. The sheriff said I could go out back. Of course, Mr. Wake. You can get there through the cell corridor. Oh. Thermos. Hey! Hey! Yeah, it's uh, Mulligan here. I'm at Stucky's gas station with Thornton. There's no sign of him. Or... Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. There's Thornton. Oh, my gosh. He's... Okay, I, I can't. I missed that whole thing because he won't shut up down there.
deputies, they won't, they don't understand. They won't the early mm. morning light hurt my eyes and made my head ache. Mm. The man on the phone had said, go through the fence on the left. Must be right there. Yo, he was really annoying. God dang. Oh, no thermos. Well, folks, it's been another long night, and uh, it's about time for me to sign off for a while. God knows I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> Just one more item before I go. It's been a busy night for the sheriff's department. We've had a few broken windows, even a report of shots fired on Main Street. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton had to deal with two intoxicated young men who were celebrating the completion of their deer fest float. Now, folks, we get this every year. I know it's exciting that the big day is almost here, but let's save it for the party and leave the gunplay for the shooting competition. Yeah. No point in getting all worked up yet. Cool. Get out of here, it's music. The oh, okay a hole in the fence behind the police station there was something for me in an abandoned car probably a gun oh god dang what kind of kick was that <laughs> all right manuscript the kidnapper fired his gun one last time and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mast blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Mm. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? Okay, that's gotta be when we meet him up. Or meet up, meet up with him. Oh, shit. Had been placed on the front seat. Oh, business. Hey, Barry. Ow, ow, thank God. Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week. You and Alice. Oh, I've been worried sick. I flew out yesterday. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. Ow, what the hell is going on? I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to get to Elderwood National Park to meet Alice's kidnappers. Shoot. Oh. Oh. Come on, Alan. Get your knees right. Did he shut up? Wow. He knocked out. Call the writer is a light that reveals the world of his story from darkness. Shapes it from nothingness. The way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. Bro. Just wanted to settle all the damage the Anderson brothers might have inadvertently caused on their recent and regrettable little outing. They are not accountable for their actions, of course. I can assure you that my staff has been reprimanded. Tor and Odin never caused any trouble to anyone when they were still living at their farm. <laughs> Tor and Odin? Indeed. All we can do is to slow down the progress of their dementia. Oh, okay. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Wake? I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about... Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for its roaches. The cabins at Elderwood are pretty nice, though. That sounds perfect. I'm Dr. Emil Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh! oh Take it easy. Clocked him. Hey, nobody move. Get your hands off of my client. Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. 
you yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. No mm. gun, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. I would not be acting like that if someone just sucker punched me like that. <clears throat> what the hell was that about, Al? <laughs> you can still stay at my place. A replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were going to lock you up. Hmm. My man, Barry. I had to talk to someone. I told Barry everything. He thought I was certifiable, but when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money, and he believed <laughs> that Alice had been kidnapped. And hmm. beyond that was another story. I had a midnight appointment with the kidnapper in a place called Lover's Peak, somewhere in Elderwood National Park. The plan was to rent a cabin. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. Mr. Wake! Barry, you found him! Hi, Rose. Oh, wow. I was just thinking about you, too. Great. I was just bringing Rusty some coffee. He's on the balcony, looking after Max. Poor thing. I really need to go. Great to see you again, Mr. Wake. Later! Barry, you're not getting that. Max. What an airhead. Jeez, Mr. Takes a Swing at Everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. She even has a fan site dedicated to you. Jeez. And she was very helpful when I was looking for you. Seriously, Al, what you were saying in the car, just listen to yourself. What, you shot a guy? And his body just disappeared. <laughs> the last time you slept. Well, are you high? Have you been drinking? No. Look, Barry, I'm missing a week, and someone's got Alice. Do you and understand just... what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Jeez. Don't get me wrong. It's a good story. Could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm. Right, wait here. Okay. <laughs> oh. Talk to Rusty. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. Hey, Rusty, right? You rent cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kind of full here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. What happened? Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. They're oh. Here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. <sighs> well, at least Max is going to be okay. He got lucky. Dang it. Max is still groggy from the shot I gave him, and I'd rather not leave him alone just yet. The form's on the desk across from the mammoth skeleton. Oh, okay. I'm like, where is the format? Al, you can't just go and meet a kidnapper. Those situations always end up in disaster. You gotta talk to the cops. She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing is... Listen, you hit your head. I mean, geez, Al, come on. You gotta understand how crazy all this sounds. If you try to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha-ha! Let's have a laugh on Barry! Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. Okay. Thermos. Okay. Uh, he said the mammoth skeleton. Where is it? Ah, right over here. Okay. All right. Is that enough, Barry? Cool. Freaking bear trap. I think this is the form you wanted. And here are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot, too. Thanks. 
If you have any trouble finding it, just keep your eyes on the radio mast. It's right below that. Oh, okay. Hopefully I can spot that in the dark. Look, You're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went poof into thin air. A guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. <laughs> you hear that from people who end up spending time in padded rooms, strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with too long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills. Al, you make cruel jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. You're the skeptic. You gave me an hour-long lecture on homeopathy last month. What was it? If there's no proof, it's pure bullshit. Period. Guess the laugh's on me then. Mm, yep. Al, come on. I mean, okay. Okay, maybe something weird happened to you, okay? Well, thanks for the heartfelt vote of confidence. All I'm saying is you gotta throw me a bone here, bestseller. What would you think if it was me? There's no way you should be going out at midnight with a gun. No one asked you to come here, Barry. Either work with me on this or go straight back to New York. Your choice. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, just grunt. That's all you can do. I'm being very careful to let all the dialogue just, like, run out. Al. Al? We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI? Damn it, Barry. They'll kill her. <laughs> this is not a goddamn debate, Barry. <laughs> I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to come alone. Okay, okay then. I understand. But you're my best friend and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Tell me what to do to help and I'll do it. You stay here and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. Oh. Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist. Or it'll be deliverance all over again. Oh, jeez. Bless you. Oh, this place is trying to kill me. I bet there's mold in here, spores, poison ivy, God knows what. This is so not worth a fifteen percent commission. Mm. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't be. I probably wouldn't be able to survive with him sneezing like that. Ah, thermos. Oh, and batteries. All right, we got nine batteries. They took my weapons. Yeah, let's keep the lights on for now. All right. Dang, I want my shotgun. Where's my pistols? All right, let's go. We're going unarmed. I'm not sure if we're prepared. Okay. Thanks, Barry. And there's a manuscript. Barry had never gotten along with Alice, but he knew Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. Huh? It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode. And was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. Jeez. All right. I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me out of it. Mm. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them. And they had Alice. I say somebody was down here. They drove. Oh, we just drove up there. Never mind. Let me stop talking. <laughs> Even though I should be. Oh. Okay. We're just dumb raccoons. Anything here? Oh, light switch. Oh, 
Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your dear best plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. No plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly, Bat. But I'm going to check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the party contest judges, too. <laughs> well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's my kind of exercise. Now, oh, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a large mouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Yeah. Considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. Hmm. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. All right. Let's get out here before the music kicks in. And Bob, how you gonna give me? Wait, when did? Oh shoot! I saw that. Oh shoot, man! Get out of here! They gonna come around the corner, I bet. Oh man, I saw that clear as day. Let's let's get out of here. We gotta go this way. Crap. <laughs> I was like, what is that black shadow? <laughs> oh shoot. It's starting. And the light just went out. Um, oh, wait, we just came from there. Wait, did we? Oh, oh, crap. Oh, no. It's been a scuffle. Oh, here we go again. Crime and punishment. The cancer and cure of civilization. But some crimes are impossible to punish. Especially in Night Springs. Another episode. episode. The Man in the Mirror. Michael Jackson? Time to talk to my boy before the cops arrive, you know? He won't 
won't stop screaming. Am I right? You think he's ever going to be okay? <laughs> I left my mark. Believe me. You, you bastard. What? You going to shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. They got me. I, I don't understand any of this. And you never will. Don't worry. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. Maybe in the mirror. What? Whoa. What? What just happened? Oh, I like these. Was he hallucinating too? Hmm. Okay. Oh, shoot. Is someone going to be... Someone's going to be out there, I bet. What? Nothing. All right, get your dodge ready. Okay. All right, we out, we out, we out. Dang, it's too many, like, spots going off the path. Do not feed wildlife. $100 penalty. Yeah, I'd rather not. Oh, manuscript. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him, too. She liked him a lot. He taught her to dance, and life had certainly taught her the value of a man who was gentle. He treated her well, made her smile made her feel good. But Rusty wasn't the prince of her dreams, and that tended to underline the unbearable truth. She was no closer to that Hollywood magic than he was. Hmm. Wait, I don't, I don't remember Rusty. Oh. Drop hazard. Yeah, let's not do that. Dang, another one? Nice. The air in the visitor center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten, drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. Oh. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. Never mind. I know who Rusty is. I'm not good with names when you only meet the person like once. 